Well, folks, it's official. They're telling us not to buy stocks once again. Oh, man, I saw this. I don't know. I was like, I got to comment on this, okay? Fund manager survey coming out here, and I saw CNBC showing this, okay? Good time to invest, or is it a bad time to invest in stocks? And basically, this chart is showing us that right now, it is not a good time. Only 24% of participants are saying it's a good time to invest in stocks right now. 53% are saying it is a bad time to invest in stocks right now. And this made me think. I said, why don't we take it a little look deeper, okay, and find out when we look at these sentiment surveys and from fund managers and whatnot, are they accurate? When they say don't buy stocks, should we really not be buying stocks? And when they say do buy stocks, should we be buying stocks? Or is this actually a contrarian indicator, meaning essentially the opposite is true. And so I actually want to show you guys some information, some data in this video and go through some of this. And we'll talk a few stocks in this video and a few things in the market. But really, I want to focus on this because this is a big, important subject because this isn't the only time you're going to hear this. Oh, you shouldn't be buying stocks right now or you should be buying stocks. And uh, you got to dig deeper, OK, because what we're going to find is when they're saying don't buy, most of the time you should be buying. And when they're all saying buy, that's actually the time to be a, believe it or not, seller in the market. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video as always. I appreciate everybody that's always here. Thank you for being subscribed, folks. Let's get straight into this. My gosh, is this shocking, folks, okay? Check this out. Sentiment turns more bearish in April. Percent rank uh, of the fund manager survey growth expectations plus cash plus equity, okay? And what's fascinating of this is if you go back throughout many time periods, when this chart gets very low, it's usually a phenomenal time to be a buyer in the market, okay? And for example, right here, very low. This was October 2008. Now, this was a tremendous time to be a buyer of stocks. The stock market double bottomed again in March of 2009, around February, March of 2009. But this was, this was pretty much a bottom in the market, okay? And you could have picked up stocks for insanely cheap prices across the board. And this was a great time to be a buyer. Meanwhile, folks were saying, you know, you shouldn't be a buyer of stocks at this particular time. July 2010, same exact situation, right? You could look at, obviously, March of 2020, tremendous time to be a buyer of stocks. Look at October 2022, tremendous time to be a buyer of stocks, right? And now recently, we'll see if this is another great time to be a buyer of stocks. But actually, usually when you see sentiment gets this bearish around fund managers, it's usually a great time to be a buyer. And think about it from this context, uh, context right? If fund managers are bearish on the market, if they're choosing not to buy, right? Well, that means they're not really putting buying pressure out there in the market. So what happens as over time, more and more of those fund managers flip to, let's call it the bullish side, and more and more of them engage in the market and become buyers in the market. Well, it almost becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy of sending the market higher and higher and higher because there's more and more buying pressure out there. When almost all the fund managers are bearish at a particular time, that means they're not buying, right? Because if they were, if they were, if they were, if they were bullish, if they were bullish on the market, they would be buying. So if they're all bearish, that means they're not buying. So all it takes is a few of them to come in and be a little more bullish, a little more bullish, and it sends buying pressure in the market, right? And when you get that more and more buying pressure, it can send stocks up, the entire market up, more and more and more. Now, also check out this. I thought this was a few interesting uh, points to bring out, right? If we look at this, summer 2007, basically sentiment was very, very positive. And what happened right after summer of 07? The market, the market topped in, in summer of 07, and the next two to two and a half years were awful in the market, right? The next two years were awful in the market. If we look at here, right, this was shortly before a fall 2018, which we had a bear market in the fall of 2018. It was nasty. I, I went through that market. It, it trashed me for a bit there. It was ugly. And for anybody that experienced that market, you know what I was speaking about, right? It was a nasty market. We got shredded, but look at sentiment right before that happened. S sentiment was amazing. B bullishness, bullishness, bullishness. And what did we get thrown in our face? A insane amount of selling pressure in the fall of 2018. It was ugly, okay? Check this out. I mean, this is about the most bullish we've ever seen the market in terms of sentiment. And what time period was that? That was early 2021, right? 2020, this is during the 2021 craze. We saw these numbers get about to the highest ever. And obviously, if we're thinking about recent times, it was probably one of the worst times to be a buyer of stocks. 
in that, that you know, early to mid-2021 time frame, right? So isn't this just a fascinating thing? And it almost goes to show you that you almost want to move against when these folks are so far on one side bullish or so far on one side bearish, you almost want to move completely contrarian to whatever side they're on. Because, I mean, when you just kind of look back at the data, you kind of start to find, oh my gosh, when these guys are all bullish, that's time to maybe sell or stop buying. And when all these guys are bearish, that's definitely, at least traditionally, it's been the time to buy. We'll see if it plays out again. It's played out so far. I can tell you that. Look at those numbers where we're at in October versus now. Absolutely fascinating, right? Now, you can take this a step further. We can look at AI investor sentiment, which is basically a survey of investors and, you know, are they bullish or are they bearish for the next six months in the stock market, specifically the next six months, not the next six years, not the next year, the next six months, okay? And this is unbelievable how much you want to basically go against whatever the market's doing at a particular time. Check this out. This was January 12th, 2000. The market was the most bullish we've ever seen in terms of AI investor sentiment. So basically meaning investors believe the market was going to go substantially higher over the next six months. Well, that did not play out. The market went substantially lower over the next six months and actually went lower over the next couple of years there. It was a bad time. But yet everybody was bullish at that particular time. That did not mean it was time to buy stocks. That actually meant it was time to sell stocks. Right here, we were very bullish in 2007, right? This is, this is you know, January 17, 2007. 58% of investors were bullish on the market for the next six months. That's an extremely high number, right? And as we know, 2007 was the beginning of the fall for the market. And then things really got ugly in 2008, obviously, right? So definitely, definitely was at the top in 2007. It was not a time to be a buyer of stocks at, at that particular time, right? This is, this is even more shocking. March 4th, 2009, almost perfectly at the bottom of the stock market, almost perfectly. This is when almost every single stock that was in the market bottomed right around this time, March of 2009. We were insanely bearish on the market. Check this out. Only 19% of investors were bullish on the market the next six months. Little did they know the next six months would have a massive epic bull rally, folks, a massive epic bull rally the next six months. Meanwhile, almost no one was bullish at that particular time. Isn't that fascinating? Now, we could also look at recent data and see how things have played out, right? Obviously, October, November, December, January, phenomenal times to be a buyer of stocks, right? But look at this. I mean, if you look back at all these time periods, I mean, look at this. You know, these are very low numbers. Only 28% of investors bull bullish on the market the next six months. 24% of investors bullish on the market, right? Meanwhile, it should have been 100% bullish because, let's be honest, uh, look where the market's gone the last six months. It's been tremendous, right? And look at how overwhelmingly bearish the market's been, including this week right here, December 21st. 52, over 52% 52 of investors bearish on the market the next six months. Man, was that a wrong assumption. And holy smoke, is that's no joke, is right? Look at this. This was, check this out, okay? October 13th, 2022, only 20% of investors were bullish on the market for the next six months. Only 20%. Meanwhile, nearly 56% of investors were bearish on the market the next six months. So, if you were just looking at this, you would assume that the market over the next six months, you know, must have went down substantially because, I mean, gosh, everybody's bearish on the market. Almost three times the amount of investors are bearish on the market that's bullish on the market. But what really happened in reality over this next six months? Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Over the next six months, the NASDAQ went up over 20%. Not in a year but in a six month span. Could they have been more wrong about that, right? Absolutely incredible. And so when you're looking at these indicators, it's fascinating because many times you should actually be the contrarian with everybody's bearish on the market. Yeah. Even as uncomfortable as it feels, you have to go bullish. And if everybody and their grandma is bullish on the market, that's a time period you know it's probably time to sell or it's time to cash up at that particular time frame. It's an absolutely fascinating thing we have going on here, okay? I released a video after the market closed on October 12th, 2022. And I said the stock market is set up for an epic rally. It was a 21 minute video and I went into all these different points on why I believed the market was gonna be set up for an epic rally. 
And obviously we got the epic rally, right? But it was fascinating kind of reading back at the comments at that particular time. Because the comments were very, I would say a lot of them were very against what I believed in that situation and the data I laid out, okay? This person says, not yet. Got to see a leg down before the rally. Fed hasn't pivoted. More pain still coming. Jeremy probably went to Planet 13. Uh, whatever he's smoking must be good, right? That was the approach. It was just like, you know, that's how bearish everybody was that they couldn't even take, uh, you know, me laying out all that data and saying why the market was set up for an epic rally. And sure enough, we got the epic rally. You know, obviously a lot of this type of stuff, just calling me a clown, just calling me names, stuff like that, right? And, you know, to be honest, 2022 definitely changed my approach to YouTube forever um, in kind of just my thoughts and, and process and in everything when it comes to that. Because I'll never forget the way I was treated in 2022. I will never forget that. And I'll never forget the way people treated me. And, and, you know, it was mostly from people under the age of 30. I'll just be honest. And so nowadays I don't even make my videos with edits and all this fancy stuff because at the end of the day, I'll never forget the way I was treated. Never. And like, I've always seen, especially with the older demographic that are more mature, have been around longer, experienced more markets. Like they know there's some people that are under the age of 30 that are really mature and have, you know, great thoughts and those sorts of things. But what I found is we attracted a lot of people in the stock market under the age of 30, not mature, just, you know, completely, you know, those people that you just are, are just like, I don't even want to be associated with these sorts of folks, right? And that's who dove into the market in 2021. And then for any of us that were long, had long positions in 2022 and got shredded, right, which I did and so did everybody that was basically long, we got treated like absolute crap. And, you know, are those people even in the market nowadays? No, they're not in the market. They're long gone. But that's what happened, right? And so my approach always now is I create... I create videos for more mature folks that are more experienced in the market. I'm not doing fancy edits. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that because it, I'm not, I don't want to even attract those younger demographics. If those people are mature enough to watch a 20, 30 minute video of me going through a million charts and a million data points then great, but that's not who I make my videos for. I make my videos for, you know, the, the 35 year old who makes, you know, $90,000 a year. That's who I make my, my videos for. I make the videos for the, the truck driver who makes $75,000 a year and loves to put my videos on while he drives around the United States of America. Like those are the sorts of folks I create my videos for because I'll never forget the way I was treated last year. Never. Uh, what have you been smoking, man? You know, just a lot of commentary about that, right? This person says, at least this was somewhat of a, uh, I guess you can call it an educated comment if we want to call it that. QT has barely started. Jeremy's starting to sound like a brainless bullish as Kathy would. <laughs> they said, uh, you know, uh, QT has barely started. The thing with QT, right, quantitative tightening, you never know uh, what effects that's going to have on the market. And there was a lot of people assuming that because QT had been barely started, right, that the, just meant the market had to go lower. And it's like, that's not really how this works at all, right? This person says, I respect and like Jeremy's opinion, but he knows nothing but a bull market and buy the dip. I am so thankful I haven't been buying like he has in the market as it continues down. He refuses to see or acknowledge current macroeconomic or ge geopolitical events. I'm not a perma bear, but I'll continue to sit on cash. And, you know, you can continue to sit on cash. Like, that's a, certainly a decision, right? Um, sitting on cash is definitely an interesting thing to do in a time period of uh, extremely high inflation, right? But in regards to, you know, th this whole thought process about, oh, Jeremy is just always a bullish and, and all these sorts of things. No, you can find me actually in late 2020 into early 2021. What type of stocks was I buying? Like super boring value stocks or holding cash heavy at that particular time. Why? Because there wasn't opportunities in the market. So if you think I'm always bullish, that just shows me you're not very educated on my opinions or you don't follow my content very closely, right? And also, damn it, it pays a lot better to be bullish and bearish just factually. This is my entire life, my entire life, not my entire investing life, my entire life period since I was brought onto this earth, okay? And the NASDAQ's gone up 3,000%, 3,000%. My entire life, every major dip is a buying opportunity. The massive dips we got last year was a huge buying opportunity. If we get any buying huge dips in the market over the next year, two years, three years, whatever, huge buying opportunities, you don't get these very often, and when you do, you've got to take advantage. You better have been taking advantage of the dips after the tech bubble if you, got, if you were in the market at that time. You better have been taking advantage of the massive dips you got in the great financial crisis and every single other dip along the way. You've got to take advantage of those. There'll be some day when the NASDAQ's, I don't know, 50,000, <laughs> you know, 100,000, and there's going to be some day we look back on this 
in this massive epic dip we had where the peak to trough, the NASDAQ went down 37%. There's going to be a time period on a chart. It looks like that, folks. And it looks like that. Wasn't this, this was, this was the Rona crash. Now it just looks like a blip on the radar, right? This was a tech bubble, the craziest stock market bubble we ever had in history of mankind. And now it just even looks like a blip on the radar. The craziest bubble we ever had in history. Think about that for a moment, right? This was a great financial crisis. That was the great financial crisis right now, right there, right? So this, you got to understand, as, as epic as it looks on a chart, the, the NASDAQ dropping 6,000 points, 5,000 points, whatever, right? you got to understand, 10, 20, 30 years from now, this is just going to be another blip on the radar. And that's the that's part that I just think a lot of people don't understand, right? So at the end of the day, I'm going to be more on the bullish side because it pays a lot better, folks. Okay? It pays a lot better. This comment. When the Fed keeps rates consistent or drops them, the market will take off again. So interesting thought there, and that's a, a false thought that a lot of people thought. And the reason being is because what the Fed did in the Rona crash and the great financial crisis, a lot of people think the only way, the only way the market can go up is if the Fed, um, you know, drops rates. It's just not true. We've seen it plenty of times where we, the market does very well outside of a situation where the, the, the you know, Fed funds rates at near zero. And usually if Fed funds rates at near, near zero, usually that means you're in uh, economic problems at that particular time, right? And so don't ever think like the only way the market can go up is if the Fed, uh, you know, drops rates or something like that. That's just not factually accurate, right? No, they're all, not all the comments were negative on that video. There were definitely some positive, right? You're probably the only, only YouTuber that has some, you know what, uh, and I like it and I believe, I believe you're right. I also hope you're right. We'll celebrate soon, uh, you know, someday soon, right? And at that particular time, obviously, everybody and their grandma was just bearish, 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 bearish. No one had anything positive to say, and I just laid out the data. As somebody that's been in this game for 15 years, I just laid out the data and, and put it together on why we were set up for a pretty darn epic rally, right, in that video. That's all. Right? This person said, Jeremy is never afraid uh, to have a totally different outlook than everyone else. I don't always agree, but I respect it. Uh, most are sheep. And in the market, it doesn't pay to be a sheep. That's all I'll say about that. You've got to be the wolf in this game. This is money game, okay? This is the, the most... Um, this is the most realist thing we have to, I don't know, the gladiator days or something like that, right? In, in terms of like the stock market. You're either a wolf or you're a sheep. And the sheep, we know what happens there, right? But, you, you know, you're either one of those two sides. And what we find, I just showed you guys, I just laid out all the data, right, in those sentiment surveys. You know, look what happens to the sheep every time. When everybody's saying bye, 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 you get, you, get, you know, uh, not treated so well, right? When everybody's saying sell, 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 don't be bullish, don't buy stocks, what we find time and time again is, like, it's the best opportunities to buy stocks. Many times it's generational buying opportunities. Time and time again, right? You know, they were saying don't buy stocks in 08, 09, 2010, 2011. Those are the best time to be a buyer of stocks we've seen in, you know, 20, 30, 40 years. Think about that for a moment, right? I mean, let that sink in. Gail says, yes, yes, yes. And thank you for a different view. It's refreshing. I, you know, happy to provide it. Happy to provide it, right? And I was the same guy that in 2021 was making videos about how out of control the market was right? Which was a very hard time period to make those sorts of videos. I made several of those videos about where valuations were at. We were getting way stretched on the market to the highest levels we've been at since a tech bubble. You know, it is what it is, right? So L stock, another new high here today, right? And uh, this stock just continues to do well. I mean, some of you guys have taken advantage of some opportunities in the market the next six, you know, the past six to nine months. And some of you guys are going to have bought your elf stock. I don't know what stock it is, okay? I don't know what stock you bought and have been buying. And hopefully you've been building out a great portfolio of 10, 15, 20 stocks. But you might have an elf in your portfolio, like I do, right? And just remember the story of elf. is a story of me seeing this company before other people saw this company. And making profits and then taking my profits far too early. It was a time period when I owned nearly 10,000 shares. And so just make sure whatever stocks you found that are your next elf... Don't be like me and take your profits way too soon and then be sitting on $1,000 and be like, or 1,000 shares and be like, why isn't this 10,000 shares right now? This should be close to a million dollar position for me right now. But it's not because I chose to take profits and profits and profits on a company that would just continue to execute better and better and better. And I shouldn't have done that, right? And so make sure you, you don't make that mistake. And the last perspective I want to share with you is, you know, you're, you're planting your trees, right? 
And I don't know how long you've been in the money game. You might have been in for a year or two. You might be in for five years, 10 years, 20 years, right? But it's about planting that seed and growing that tree bigger and bigger and bigger and taking care of it more and more and more and watching it grow bigger, right? And, you know, I never was really one for nature and those sorts of things until I bought uh, a house in, in 20, in, what was that year? 2018 or 2019, I bought uh, my first house. And the house was fairly new, so the trees in the backyard were, were pretty small. And um, I took a, I, I wanted to grow these trees really big because I actually wanted to block out, like, I wanted privacy in the backyard, so I wanted to block out, like, the neighbors. They were also two-story homes, so they could kind of see into my yard. I thought it was a little weird, so I wanted to grow these trees big, and they were really small. Like, the trees were shorter than me when I moved in this house, right? And so I would give these trees miracle grow. I'd water the trees. I would give these trees so much care if I saw them kind of browning up in the summer, because you know here in Vegas it can get hot, right? I'd water the trees more. I'd make sure I took so, such good care of them. And it was fascinating over the years watching those trees grow bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and, you know, be double my height, uh, if not way over double my height. And it was just so cool to see that, right? And, like, that was just kind of reminding me of building out a stock portfolio, building your wealth, right? And growing your tree bigger and bigger and bigger. And so... You know, just, just remember what you're doing this for and remember it's about the growth over time. It's not going to, you know, not always or, or is your tree going to give you the massive amount of apples, right? Some, some years are going to be better than others. Some years are going to be worse than others. But it's about always keeping it in mind, taking good care of it, working hard, and uh, growing that tree bigger and bigger. And you'd be surprised at what you can accomplish over a few years. People way uh, overestimate what they can accomplish in a few weeks or a few months, but they way underestimate what they can accomplish in a few years. I mean, it's absolutely fascinating, folks. So I appreciate you joining me as always. If you ever want to say hello to me, you enjoy the content, you enjoy the, the channel and whatnot, say hello to me on Instagram. Send me a DM on there. That's also linked in the description if you want the direct link to that, or you can just search me, Financial Education Jeremy. Make sure everything's spelled right. There's a ton of accounts that try to impersonate me on IG, so do keep that in mind. If you're looking to apply to join my private stock group, the private website, Wealth group. If you're ready to take your investing up to the next level, your wealth up to the next level, then check out the pinned comment down there. That will be to apply to join us in there. Much love as always and have a great day.